Let's talk about El Salvador. President Nayib Bukele out here tweeting this weekend, saying that roughly a third of El Salvadorans, sorry, check that Salvadorans is how you say the people who live in El Salvador. Roughly a third of Salvadorans have accessed and are using El Chivo crypto wallet that has been rolled out uh, in concert with the country's new Bitcoin law. Now, uh, this came, I believe, with a little bit of an airdrop. So this is people kind of voting uh, to catch that incentive package while they can. But nonetheless, 2.1 million, that's not nothing. It's pretty big in crypto terms, actually. Interesting to see uh, this number shared publicly over the weekend. I'm going to toss this over to Naomi, President Naive, out here with some stats. What do you make of this? Take it with a grain of salt? I don't know. What do you think? I probably take the numbers at face value just from other reports that I've read, other ways that people are accessing this data. Um, it's interesting, I mean, the Chivo wallet is a government-run wallet, completely KYC'd. Um, this is a country where people, you know, 75 percent of people didn't have access to a bank account, right? And so a lot of the transactions, a lot of the activities in the economy are just flying under the radar. And suddenly they're capturing all that information uh, in their government wallet. So I, um, I definitely am wary of that side of it. Um, uh, it makes a lot of sense that they're able to get a lot of people over there by offering airdrops. That's how the entirety of DeFi operates, right? Yeah. When you just give people a bunch of free stuff, that's how we get a bunch of liquidity in that. So it's no surprise that he's using similar crypto tactics here with the wallet. Um, I mean, I will say like, regardless of that, it is cool to see so many people getting access to Bitcoin. You know, this is probably their first introduction to it. Um, they're probably exploring cryptocurrency for the first time. A lot of people in El Salvador don't even know anything about Bitcoin. A lot of surveys uh, have been done there where people have been asked, like, do you understand this? Have you heard of this? And so many people there still really don't know much about it. So I think it's super cool that people are starting to get an introduction to this. Um, I hope that as they get more informed, they move away away from the government tracking machine that is the Chivo wallet and towards something that gives them more control over their finances. But it's definitely interesting to see all of this play out. It's like this very interesting, like, ah, oh, mandates, ah, oh, freedom with Bitcoin. You know, it's a, there's a, there's a t definitely a tension there. And uh, that's to be expected as any government gets involved with a technology that's inherently freedom enabling when governments inherently are not. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. But, uh, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see lots of people using Bitcoin, but Will, I'll throw it to you. Yeah, there's been a lot of concerns and critiques of the way that El Salvador ran out their whole Bitcoin campaign on the governmental level. I think at the end of the day, though, if you're just kind of being pragmatic about the whole issue, 2.1 million is pretty big adoption. And if we do believe that Bitcoin's going to be something beneficial for everyone, it's good to see a number like that. Uh, I mean, I am very aware of like the the pushback you've seen. I think in San Salvador, you saw a Chivo ATM uh, be lit on fire by protesters against the Bitcoin rollout here. Uh, so there's definitely a two sides to this issue. But a third of all so Salvadorians, you said, Zach, uh, getting into Bitcoin this way, pretty notable. Jen, I'll throw it to you, though. Yeah, I think we can take the numbers at face value, but the information with a grain of salt. So we saw Salvadorians get $30 airdrop to them in Bitcoin. And then we saw all of these Salvadorians head on over to those uh, Bitcoin ATMs. And I can only assume that with the price volatility we've seen in the last few weeks, that because of the lack of education around Bitcoin and, and because of just the financial situation in El Salvador, $30 is a lot of money. And when you see that price fluctuating so much, I can assume that a lot of Salvadorians had went to the ATMs to withdraw what was left of their $30 and spend it on the things that they really need for their family. So I would kind of like to know what active user means. Um, Again, we're talking about those Bitcoin ATMs, and I think about like the ecosystem around using Bitcoin as legal tender in in El Salvador. And we spoke about the MoneyGram story on the show a few weeks ago. And part of that story was when people are receiving remittances from overseas and going to MoneyGram or Western Union, they they run the risk of being met by criminals who know why people are going to these institutions to withdraw money. And I wonder if we're going to see that same problem with the Bitcoin ATMs. Yeah, that's, that's a really a great idea. point. Yeah, that's a that's that's a good thought. There's, um, yeah, we'll we'll see how that unfolds. I mean, there's still 
two thirds of the population left, and we'll see uh, what the adoption metric ultimately looks like. And I'd be curious to see what other competing wallet options really get, gather steam there, because I think that'll be really interesting to see as well. Um, all yeah, right, if all, there's a... all stuff to monitor. Yeah, I was. I would just add to Jen's point that if um, if they do have an issue with people, <laughs> you making fun of me or my jiggles? I'm just, um, just if, <laughs> if um. You know, it's a great point, Jen, about physical locations where people are going with physical cash is a hot spot for criminal activity with people going and just robbing these people who are taking that money. Um, it is interesting when you have something like Bitcoin ATMs, where again, you have that physical location. But if you have a very decentralized setup where everyone is holding their Bitcoin on their person, suddenly it kind of changes the dynamic and it takes away those focal points, those target areas. Why well, I mean, it makes everyone a target in a way, but it really does uh, disperse the net gain that these criminals can have by targeting on one particular area. They really have to spread out their effort a whole lot. So it'll be very interesting to see how people not having to go to these physical locations in order to send remittances overseas, just being able to send it on their phone could be very, very helpful for the people there. So I'm definitely watching that side of the story keenly. 